behalf of the entire Harper family, I'd like to welcome you to this memorial service for Paul Harper. It is a painful and sad thing to say goodbye to one who meant so much to so many, to one who touched so many lives in this community. In this time, we get to share our memories and our sorrows over Paul's loss. I believe this meeting house functions as a protective shelter of healing love, and so I believe it is as good a place as any to gather our memories of Paul and to offer them up to one another and to God. There is much to mourn in Paul's absence from us. We have lost a beloved husband and father, grandfather, great-grandfather, and friend. This is a time in which we are free to face our emptiness, to acknowledge our loss, and to feel the reassurance, comfort, and hope offered by the words of scripture, the memories of those gathered here, and the prayers of this entire community. But this is not only a gathering for those who mourn. We do mourn, but we are also here to offer celebration and thanksgiving for a life well lived. And Paul's life was that, from his commitment to his family, to his creative spirit, exhibited in his long career in advertising and his patronage of so many art institutions. So too, his service to his country during World War II and his love for the natural world testify to the strength and vitality that were his throughout his life. When I visited Paul and Eleanor some months ago, I was incredibly impressed with the paintings that Paul had done, one of which is displayed here today. It struck me as evidence of someone who remained aesthetically and culturally vibrant long after most people have discarded those passions. When I noticed a copy of Dennis Johnson's novel, Tree of Smoke, on the bookshelf in the living room, I mentioned that I admired the book. Paul's eyes sparkled. I think it's one of the greatest novels about war that's ever been written, he said. My own sense during that visit was that Paul and Eleanor with him was simply alive and open to the world in all of its grandeur and all of its tragedy too. And so our task this afternoon is to commend to God with thanksgiving and celebration the life of Paul Harper, a life that from all I can tell was extraordinarily well lived. Every time we gather for such occasions, we do so as those made conscious of our own frail existence on earth. And so we come as well to comfort and to support one another in our common loss, finding peace in the promises of faith, which insist that all is not lost, that all manner of things shall be well, and that we are born by an unseen presence that nurtures and holds us in our grief. And now hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And now would you pray with me? Eternal God, you have shared with us the life of Paul Harper. Before he was ours, he belonged to you. For all that Paul has given to make us what we are, and for that of him which lives and grows in each of us, and for his life that in your love will never end, we give you thanks. As we now offer Paul back into your arms, draw those of us who remain closer to one another and give us to know that peace which never ends. In this time of grief, may we remember well the prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
And now I would invite everybody to rise and join me in singing hymn number 206, I Danced in the Morning.